America's deadliest Irishman. He trained the Devil's Brigade in World War II. Beginnings Dermot Pat O'Neill was a ferocious Irishman who fought gangsters and triads on the streets of Shanghai and Nazi stormtroopers in Italy in World War II, yet lived to tell the tale. O'Neill is a legendary figure in combatives history, yet little has been written about him, especially when compared to his peers such as William Fairbairn or Francois d'Elisque. Dermot Michael O'Neill was born March 21, 1905 in Newmarket, County Cork, Ireland. His father was a police inspector in the Royal Irish Constabulary. The story goes that in 1919 O'Neill signed on as a cabin boy on an old steamer bound for Asia. And after a couple of years journeying around, he jumped ship in Shanghai and joined his brother who worked at a bank in the international settlement. After some time, O'Neill saw a recruitment ad for the Shanghai Municipal Police, the SMP, and after replying to it, was inducted into the force in 1925. Constable O'Neill, Shanghai Municipal Police The Shanghai Municipal Police, a multinational unit composed mostly of Chinese with a core of British, Sikh and Japanese men, was responsible for policing the international settlement. The settlement's 14 stations included red light districts, streets run by gangsters and triads. And it was in these that Constable O'Neill cut his teeth, so to speak, regularly putting his life on the line in brutal street fights. Indeed, on his very first day on duty in the streets of the settlement, he got caught up in a perilous shootout with a Chinese gang. O'Neill would go on to serve in these same dangerous streets until 1938. William Ewart Fairbairn Almost two decades previously, way back in 1907, a tough young British Marine called William Ewart Fairbairn had also arrived in Shanghai and joined the SMP, fighting Chinese gangsters on the same streets. Fairbairn also studied the fighting arts, jiu-jitsu and judo with Japanese masters boxing and knife fighting. From 1925 to 1935, Fairbairn, in his role as the SMP's assistant commissioner, set up and led the so-called reserve unit, often described as a riot squad, but in effect the world's first SWAT team. Over his 10-year command, Fairbairn pioneered highly creative tactics and training for this special police unit, working alongside the more youthful Pat O'Neill, who Fairbairn seems to have mentored. As a part of his development in innovative police work, Fairbairn oversaw the use of special procedures such as an ingenious practical pistol shooting range and a house clearing course where officers were trained under conditions of stress to enter buildings and clear rooms using their firearms effectively. To this end, he helped develop bulletproof shields and two levels of body armour rated from standard pistol rounds to Mauser 7.63mm high velocity. Fairbairn went on to codify his eclectic experiences and training methods in hand-to-hand -hand combat, pistol shooting and knife fighting into his own system called Defendu, otherwise described by him as gutter fighting, where the objective was to get tough, get down in the gutter, win at all costs. Sergeant Shanghai Municipal Police in the meantime, O'Neill, who had been a boxer in his teens, was promoted to sergeant in the SMP within two years. Like his mentor, Febben, he also took every opportunity in studying a variety of Eastern martial arts, including Chinese boxing, judo and jiu-jitsu. Over time, he would go on to become a sub-inspector and an acknowledged expert in judo, studying at the Kodokan under legendary Japanese sensei, Tatsukuma Ushijima. He also trained with the famous Kamura and in time would go on to become the highest ranked non-Japanese judo expert in the world, a Godan or fifth dan. He trained ferociously and was particularly respected for his ground fighting skills. Fairbairn's peer and later co-designer of the infamous Fairbairn Sykes fighting knife, Eric A. Sykes, taught O'Neill the skills of combat shooting. William Fairbairn trusted O'Neill completely and backed him for the Shanghai Municipal Police's post of unarmed combat instructor. 
O'Neill's mastery of close combat fighting skills would eventually become known as the O'Neill method of hand-to-hand -hand combat. Winds of War Dermot O'Neill would leave the SNP in 1938 after 14 years of service to become head of security for the British Embassy in Tokyo, Japan, where he would also study Kenpo Karate. Wisely, he left his post before the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor in December 1941 and travelled to Australia, where at W.E. Fairbairn's recommendation, he was eventually recruited to help the fledgling American Office of Strategic Services, the OSS, in 1942, ostensibly to train agents in the combatives he had picked up whilst working in Shanghai for the SNP. The Devil's Brigade once in the USA, O'Neill was sent on temporary assignment as hand-to-hand -hand combat instructor to the newly set up 1st Special Service Force, a multinational unit composed of mostly Americans and Canadians and led by Lieutenant Colonel Robert Frederick. Winston Churchill himself said that the 1st SSF was, quote, the most feared commando unit of the war. This new training post at Fort William Henry Harrison in Helena, Montana was right up O'Neill's street, so to speak, as he already had much experience teaching US Marines from the 3rd Division in Shanghai whilst working with the SNP. William Fairburn himself had been asked to train the unit, but at a sprightly 62 thought himself a tad too old and recommended the much younger O'Neill instead. However, the fort had no real training facilities to speak of, and so O'Neill had to conduct his instruction outdoors in a course that amounted to a total of around 35 to 40 hours. His training began with the officers of the 1st SSF and involved coaching in a relatively simple series of moves. He was familiar with W.E. Fairburn's Defendu system, which he taught to the SNP in his Shanghai days, and his new system appears to have been a development of that, utilising Chinese foot fighting as he called it or Chinese boxing. After a brief lecture and demonstration, the officers would be allowed to practice the moves together as he watched and corrected. O'Neill would meet and marry a local woman whilst in Helena, but sadly the marriage would end in divorce shortly after the war. The O'Neill method of hand-to-hand -hand combat. Despite his enormous proficiency in judo, the O'Neill method of hand-to-hand -hand combat at this time consisted of a series of strikes and kicks to the groin, along with finger jabs to vulnerable parts of the body such as the eyes and throat, disarming techniques and silent sentry removal. A proponent of Defender would likely recognise many of these strikes. O'Neill said at the time, quote, I'm not here to teach you to hurt, I'm here to teach you to kill. O'Neill considered judo to be an inappropriate approach for the training of raw soldiers, considering it took years of instruction to gain competence in. His system was, in a nutshell, designed to enable a soldier to quickly learn how to disable any opponent, no matter how big or strong, by taking advantage of the body's most vulnerable parts, eyes, throat, groin and knees. Thus, strikes were prioritised to these areas using hands and feet. He would later state that any successful combatives training should cover five key areas, summarised thus. Hand-to-hand -hand combat training must be clearly effective, be easy to learn. No special equipment be necessary should be able to be taught over a relatively short period of time. Size and weight are irrelevant to speed and knowledge are key. The O'Neill method consisted of the following drills. Flexibility exercises, execution of the on guard, the parrying of weapons, elbow blows, use of the finger jab, side kick, pivot kick, correct falling and the on guard whilst on ground. Various other drills were also practiced including, for example, defences against kicking, defence against the knife, bayonet, use of the club and knife, where presumably soldiers would be shown how to use the unit's uniquely designed V42 stiletto or fighting knife, There were also disarms, including for the knife, the bayonet and pistol. His knife and bayonet disarms would start with sheathed weapons, then move on to live blades. 
recounted one officer who was a little fearful at first, quote, By the time you were working with real blades, you had confidence in the techniques. Combat shooting applications were also practiced utilizing the 1911.45 semi-automatic pistol. Again, these were methods he had learnt and refined in his days with the SMP. O'Neill's method proved to be eminently practical in that it was relatively easy to learn and effective. Captain, US Army. O'Neill's employers, the Office of Strategic Services, eventually requested that he be sent back to them. However, he was enjoying his time with the first SSF, saying also that, quote, he trained them, so he'd damn well fight beside them. And so through the patronage of the unit's commander, Lieutenant Colonel Frederick, he was somehow able to obtain a field commission in June 1943 as a captain in the United States Army. Quite extraordinary considering that O'Neill was not even a US citizen at the time. O'Neill would serve and see action with the 1st Special Service Force from thence till the unit's deactivation in December 1944, from the Aleutian Islands on to Italy and the south of France. Scaling the Heights In December 1943, the 1st SSF would famously climb and capture the heights of Monte La Defensa, thus breaking the stalemate of the Bernhardt Line and accomplishing in three hours what other Allied units had not been able to do in weeks of heavy fighting. The 5th Army was able to continue its advance towards Rome as a result of this action and O'Neill was there performing intelligence work for the force. The worst is yet to come. The first SSF continued to advance through German positions in the mountains near Rome and notably also aided in the desperate defence of the Anzio beachhead from the landings in February through till May 1944. The unit, despite being under strength, managed to defend 13 kilometres of the Mussolini Canal on the Anzio right flank, conducting demoralising night raids deep into the German lines, taking prisoners and leaving behind stickers with ominous messages printed on them in German stating Das Dicke Ende kommt noch, so to translate colloquially to the worst is yet to come. The unit's nickname, the Devil's Brigade, dates to this time. This comes from the fact that the brigade's members smeared their faces with black boot polish for their covert operations in the dark of the night. Dermot O'Neill would occasionally join the night raiders, gathering intelligence information. Amazingly, during the Anzio campaign, the first SSF fought for 99 days without relief. The first special service force would enter Rome and later, in August, be transferred to the south of France. Conclusion O'Neill had received United States citizenship whilst fighting in Italy and after the war ended enjoyed a varied career that took him work in Japan as a staff member of General MacArthur's SCAP headquarters and later as a police investigator for SCAP. He received his Godan or Fifth Dan from the Kodokan at this time in 1947. He also began studying Aikido in Japan and started working for the US State Department, performing intelligence work for them throughout the 1950s, apparently even traveling to Vietnam on one occasion. Later, in 1961, he would work again as a combatives instructor, teaching pilots at the Air Commando School at Hilbert Field, Florida, basic hand-to-hand -hand combat skills. His fighting system was now reduced in time frame from 35 to 40 hours to just around 8 to 12 hours, enough to instruct students in the basics in kicks and jabs to the eyes and throat. The US Army were going to borrow these techniques, printing them in their US Army Field Manual 21150, Combatives, December 1971. O'Neill later took a post as Combatives Instructor with the International Police Academy in Washington, D.C., and from there became the head of development and instruction of close combat at the United States Marine Corps Physical Fitness Academy at Quantico, Virginia in 1966. 
His system was borrowed and formed the basis of the techniques that were illustrated in the 1966 Marine Manual on hand-to-hand -hand combat in the same year. A book about the first special service force called The Devil's Brigade by Alderman and Walton was published in 1966 and filmed in 1968. O'Neill was reportedly not enamoured with his depiction in the movie. Dermot Pat O'Neill passed on August 11, 1985. His legacy as a father of combatives in the USA and around the world lives on till this day. We hope you enjoyed this short documentary. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you did. Thanks. See you again next time.